How to sew, hang up the bunting with Amber Makes. Handmade bunting makes any occasion extra special. Follow me and I'll show you how. Cutting the fabric. Now it's easiest if you use wide fabric. I've used 140 centimetre, which is 50 fitch, five inch width fabric for mine. You need to cut out the piece that's listed in the instructions. The measurements are all in there. And you'll also, also need to cut out some strips to use for the bunting string. Now, you, and there are four bunting tags that are used for each end of the bunting in case you want to make two strips. Now, if you're using the extra wide fabric, then you can just cut out the panel Cut roughly round the outside of it, don't cut around the flags, just cut roughly round the outside as you can see here because we're going to sew all the flags to the lining at the same time. You've also got some extra pieces on your panel that you can use for other items in your own makes. Now if you want to use normal quilting width fabric, 44 inches, 112 centimetres, you can do this but cut it out following the measurements listed in the instructions. And you'll also need to cut out some strips of fabrics to use for the bunting string. And again, the measurements for this are listed in the instructions and the number that you need. Now, if you're doing that, you also need to cut out the little bunting tags that are used to finish off the ends of the bunting. As you can see, I've got four here and also the extra strip. Now, if you're using this narrower fabric, you'll need to trim your bunting. So first, cut it in half along the centre to make two long strips like this. Then what you need to do is count along the bunting flags and along the edge, like here, of the tenth flag, cut along the straight line, up the diagonal line and up the other straight line. This just divides it into two pieces. So you have one that's got ten on and then you'll have one that has five on. This is so that it will fit on the narrower fabric. And then with the other strip, cut that in the same way, cut along the edge of the 10th flag. So just count along them, cut along the edge, just along the printed outline. And then that will leave you a smaller piece with five flags. Again, all of this is listed in the instructions if you want to follow it in the written words instead. Preparing the fabric. You need to pin the bunting flags right sides facing with the lining fabric. Now, if you're using the wider 55 inch fabric, you can just put all of the bunting flags that you've cut out as a whole piece right sides facing onto the lining fabric. You can see the lines through the outer lines of all the bunting are for sewing along. So pin it into place, but put your pins so they are about half an inch away from all of those seams. It just means that you can leave the pins in as you're sewing. So you can see here that the whole piece of bunting flags is pinned right sides facing to the lining fabric. Put in plenty of pins to keep everything still. Now, if you're using the narrower fabric, you'll have four strips. So place one of the bunting flag pieces that's got 10 flags on right sides facing with one strip and pin it together all the way round but leaving quarter of an inch from the seam, outside of the seam so that you can keep the pins in. Take the other 10 bunting flag strip and place that right sides facing to one of the other lining strips and pin it into place in exactly the same way. Then take the final lining strip and you can get the two remaining five bunting flags pieces side by side. I've left a small gap between them just to make it easier for sewing and then pin it into place just like this Put lots of pins in, but just keep them away from the seams, from the print, printed outlines so that you don't have to remove them whilst you're sewing. Sewing the flags. Now, whether you're using the narrower fabric or the wider fabric, the flags are all made and sewn together in exactly the same way from now on. So what you need to do is sew a quarter of an inch inside the straight top lines and the diagonal lines. Now, if you're not sure about the seam allowance or you haven't got the right foot, you can draw these lines on first. I'm drawing them on here just so that you can see where you'll be sewing. But if it's much easier if you can just guess this or use a foot that is a quarter of an inch wide. But just sew a quarter of an inch inside 
the lines for each of the flags, but not across the top, just those little straight lines that are at the top and then the two diagonal lines, but leave the top unstitched. And so one flag at a time, but because they're all on the same piece of fabric, it's just a lot easier. So work along all the way along one row, quarter of an inch inside the lines and then it will look like this so you can see that I've stitched quarter of an inch either side of the line because each flag is stitched quarter of an inch within but again leave the top straight edged unstitched so the whole panel is stitched now and I've taken all the pins out and also give it a good press because that will just set the seams once you've done that you can then cut them out so those outer lines the ones that separate the two bunting flags you need to cut along those but because you've cut, you stitched quarter of an inch inside of those lines, then that's created your flag. So carefully cut using your scissors up the diagonal line, then up the little straight line. That the little straight line at the top will go inside the bunting string, and you just get a neater finish by having a short section at the top rather than it going diagonal all the way along to the top. So cut it along one diagonal line, and then up the other diagonal line. and then up the short straight line at the top. And work all the way along, cutting out all the flags in exactly the same way. And then you will have a pile of 30 flags that look like this that are all lined. Now working on one flag at a time, we're now going to just trim off the bottom point. This is just to remove the bulk so you'll get a neater point and then grade the seam allowance by just trimming it in half. You only need to do it near the bottom just to remove the bulk. You don't need to do the whole seam allowance. Then to make sure to help the seams lay right on the edge, it's easier at this stage if you press the seam allowance over to one side. It will then look like this. So I press the seam allowance over to one side up the diagonal lines and up those straight lines. Then you can turn the flag right sides out. So push your finger in to the point and push it out. And then arrange it so that the, seam allowance, the seams are laying right on the edge. Now to get a nice neat point, you can use, I'm using the end of my large scissors here because the end of the point is quite rounded, but don't use anything sharp like small scissors because you really don't want to pierce the fabric because the seam is very close to the edge. So just use something blunt and pointed and then press the seam allowances so they lay right on the edge and then your flag will look like this. It's nice and neat and all lined. Repeat that with all the flags and then put them into piles as there are different prints there's a variety of different prints so put them in piles of all the same print so that when you join all the flags together you can alternate them so there's all my 30 flags finished making the bunting string you need to join all the bunting string strips together to make one long length you can make two or three shorter lengths but if you want to make one long length join them all together you need to take one strip and place it right sides up and then take the other strip and place it right sides down on top so then it's a right angle and the raw edges are matching. Now just mark the bottom where the bot where the point the bottom right corner matches the top one and then draw a diagonal line from the top left to the bottom right corner. This is the line that you're going to sew along. And this is so that you get a, a neater join by joining them diagonally. So now place them so that the top and the side raw edges match up and pin either side of the line. By sewing them together diagonally like this, you'll get less bulk in the seam allowance. Now sew together down that line, and it will look like this. Open up that seam allowance, press it open, and then trim it, so it's about a quarter of an inch, just to remove all the bulk, and then that's it joined, and then give it a nice press to finish that join. Then repeat that to join all the strips together in exactly the same way. The join will be less visible in your bunting string and it also will be neater as well. Once that's done, take the whole join bunting string, string strip and fold it in half with wrong sides together, matching the raw edges and press. This crease will lay across the top of the bunting, will give you a neater finish, but you will sew with one layer. Joining the bunting flags. 
Organise your bunting flags so that they're alternated, so you've got different prints in different orders, just to make your bunting more interesting. Now take the bunting string that you fold in half. We're going to be stitching through just one layer of fabric. It just helps to fold it in half. Now measure eight inches from the left-hand side and mark that with a pin. This is the end of the bunting string that you'll be using to tie up. You can make this shorter or longer if you prefer, but it's just for using for hanging the bunting. Now take the first flag and place it lining sides up. Now take the edge of the bunting string and place it so that the raw edges are matching across the top. So that the bunting string is right sides facing with the lining side of the flag. And the reason we're doing it that way is because I'm going to machine top stitch it over to the right side, which I find is neater. So it's I stitch it on the lining side to start with. Pin it together all the way along. Put a pin just where the right hand edge of that flag is and then measure two inches to the right of this. This is the gap that you're going to leave between the flags. Again, you can make this short or longer, but I find that two inches works about well. Now take the next flag and place it lining sides up, and in exactly the same way, pin the bunting string so that the raw edge is matching along the top of the, line, of the lining side of the flag, and then pin it into the place all the way along. Now you need to continue doing this with all the flags. So again, measure two inches to the right of that flag. I just pop a pin in at the top just so that I can see it. If you make sure that you keep these gaps the same all the way along, you'll just get a more even finish. So it is worth taking the time to measure and mark before you pin the next flag into place. And remember to always have it lining side up and make sure the raw edge is matching all the way along the top. And then continue doing that until you've pinned all the flags in place. And then it will look like this. So I've got a long string. Try to keep it nice and flat so it doesn't get twisted. It's just easy when you're sewing it together. Now you need to sew it into place all the way along. I've used a slightly wider 3 8 of an inch seam allowance here just to make the string a bit wider. When you sew, you can keep sewing from one flag to another. You don't need to start and stop finishing because the seam where you're sewing between the flags will be held within the bunting later. It will be at the bottom edge. At the other end of the bunting string, I found that mine was longer than I needed, so I trimmed it to eight inches at the other end so they're the same length. But again, you can adjust this if you want more or less for hanging up your flags later. Now just fold the seam from the lining side, just fold that seam allowance upwards and press it. But try not to remove that centre crease that you pressed. Once you've pressed it upwards all the way over, turn the bunting over to the right side and then fold the other long edge, fold it under so that it just covers the seam allowance. So you can fold the whole thing under and then tuck the seam allowance in or you can press the, ed the long edge under by about a quarter of an inch and fold it over. At the end of the bunting string, the eight inches you've left, you just need to fold those seam allowances under so they meet that centre crease and then fold it in half. So the reason that we've done the centre crease is that that is the crease that sits right on the top of the bunting. It just means that if your seam allowance is slightly varied anywhere or you've got extra bulk, depending on what lining fabric you've used, that you know that you will have the right, it will be right in the centre, the top of the bunting string. So make sure when you fold the bunting string over that that crease that you did right at the beginning is laying on the top edge. So pin the edge of the bunting string. Don't worry about the short ends because we'll be finishing those off later. So just fold that all in so all raw edges are enclosed and repeat that all the way along. The little two inch gap between the strings, the edges will be folded under as you've done it when you were folding under the top of the bunting and just pop a pin in those little two inch gaps. And then work your way all the way along so you can see that I'm just folding the raw edge under so that the folded edge just covers the seam. And do that all the way along. Then top stitch all the way along 
chip very close to the edge of the bunting string along the whole length. You can starting at one end, across the gaps and all the way other. So you can see I've done it here and it gives a nice neat finish. Make sure you work slowly so this top stitching is nice and neat and it will be because you will see it on the front and then continue until the end of the bunting string on the other end. Attaching the bunting tabs. Take one of your bunting tabs. You've got four of them. You only need two if you're making one length. But take one and fold the top long edge over by a quarter of an inch to the wrong side. If you measure half an inch from that top long raw edge, I'm just marking this with an erasable pen, and then fold the raw edge over so it meets up with those marks. That's a quick and easy way of having an exactly a quarter of an inch turnover. And it's important that you do this so that your bunting tab is the right size. Once you've turned it over, give it a little press. You could do this with your fingers or with an iron, but it just needs to stay over. Now fold it in half with wrong sides facing, making sure when you pin it into place that those folded under edges stay folded under. So just pin through them and then place another pin at the other end. Now sew together down this side, making sure you sew over those folded under edges and it will look like this. Now fold it in half so that the seam is lying in the centre and then pin it together along the bottom edge. You can see that seam is lying right in the centre. Once that's done, just trim off the bottom corners from that final seam that you did. And I also trim a little bit off the top ones as well. Not right to the seam, but just a little bit off to remove the bulk. Now you can turn your little pocket right sides out. So just put your fingers carefully inside. And turn it right sides out and then take something I'm using the stick for my turning tool not too sharp but pointed something that you can just push inside like if you've got some rounded edge scissors or a chopstick but just gently push out those corners so they lay right at the edges but don't pierce the fabric then make sure those edges are st still folded under give it a press to make the pocket nice and flat like that and that's the little pocket that will be the tab now take one end of your bunting string and place it inside the pocket so this is just a really neat way of finishing the end of the string it also adds a little bit of decoration as well rather than just folding the edges under and because it's printed with the little image it just makes it an, a nice pretty finish to put on the end so pin that into place so it's in the center and then top stitch all the way round to secure the bunting tab in place. And that's on the end of your bunting. And then repeat that to put a tab on the other end of the bunting string. Again, if you want to make two lengths of bunting, there are four tabs. So there you can see I've stitched one to each end. And your bunting is now finished and ready to hang up. So you can tie those ends or pin them to whatever you're going to hang it to. And you've got a lovely long length of bunting that you can use every year and bring out all the time and have to have your own handmade bunting.